In this video, I want to talk about defining fields in FileMaker Pro or your copy of FM Starting Point and using the auto enter options that are available within this tool. Now, first off, I'm going to go into the contacts date entry screen right here. I'm going to go ahead and go up under File, down to Manage, over to Database. And now we can modify our database schema, our tables, fields, relationships. Everything is accessible right up here at the top. Now, in other videos, we've talked about defining fields, different types of fields, global fields, even merge fields, which are really not even a unique kind of field. It's just the way a field is presented on screen. But what about using auto enter options and fields? What does that mean? And what are the possible consequences of using auto enter options? So first off, let's define a new field here called example. And let's make that a text field right here. I'll say create. And here it is. Now notice we have options and comments right here. If we had any auto enter options, you'd see them displayed right here. Now let's go ahead and press the options button, bring up our window. So of course the left tab right here is auto enter options and the tab to the right is validation options. Of course that validates the information that's maybe been input into the field. We'll talk about that a little bit later in a different video. Let's just focus on auto enter. Now, auto enter options might be automatically entered at the time the record is created, or they might pertain to automatically entering data later on during the course of using the database. So, for example, I can have a date field automatically enter the date or time or timestamp at the time the record is created. Now, putting the date in a text field may not be the smartest thing to do. I generally recommend creating a date field and loading the date into a date field. That makes it very searchable and very useful. The same for auto entering the time or even the timestamp. Now the name right here is a bit misleading. This is actually the machine name that the user is running at the time the record is created. What is the machine name? The machine name can be edited in FileMaker Pro on the Mac if you go up under FileMaker and down to Preferences. Now you see the system name right here. In this case, it's Richard Carlton. Richard Carlton right here was handed off to FileMaker by the operating system. It works the same in Mac and Windows. So the operating system hands off what it thinks is the machine name of the user. Now in a lot of larger organizations, you might have some sort of ID like this that the IT department has set up that's somewhat cryptic. You know, CX, VX, 5, and then maybe the fifth floor indicate that this is some sort of machine that's on the fifth floor. Now that might be good for inventory tracking for the IT department, but maybe less than fully satisfying if you're the FileMaker guy trying to figure out who is working on this record. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. And of course, account name is the account name of the user that's actually logged on with the security privileges in the security settings for this FileMaker database. So these are both handy. But this is actually the machine name or system name, and this is actually the logged in account name that the user is using currently. A lot of times this might say admin. It may not actually be the person's individual name if you're not using individual security passwords in your FileMaker database. Now, of course, this is going to auto input at the time of creation. This auto inputs at the time the record is modified. So you can actually have the database indicate when someone actually modifies a record. You can know the date and the time and the machine name and the account name of the person who modifies the record. Now it's not a full audit log where it keeps track of each person and all the times that they make modifying the record. It does show the last time a record's been modified. So this is pretty handy. So check out this contact record right here in FM Starting Point. We've automatically set up starting point to show you the creation, date and time, and the name of the person who made the record, and also the date and time and name of the person who last modified the record. So at least in FM starting point, we're working hard to capture this information for you already. Now serial number here is a critical piece if you're creating a relational database. You need a good serial number to keep all your records unique so you can track them individually. At the most basic level, you're going to create the serial number on creation. 
Of course, if you're the kind of person that wants to wait till the record's committed or actually saved to the database, you might want to delay the serial number creation until the record's actually committed or saved. There are some technical reasons you might want to do this, but for FM Starting Point and a vast majority of databases, all you need to do is create the serial numbers at the time of creation. You can always hard code a field to auto enter something, any message that you want. You could say, every time a new record is created, this is automatically input into our example text field. Now you can also do this right here. You can actually have a calculation that calculates the value that goes into that text field. And because we're using the calculation engine in FileMaker, we can do anything. So this is extremely powerful right here. That's the calculated value engine right here. Then we have the ability to do not replace any existing value if there are any. And this is interesting right here. This actually allows FileMaker to recalculate the value if any of the dependent values that are referenced in the calculation have changed. Think about it like this. If you write a calculation that references a couple fields and those fields change, this auto enter calculation can fire up on its own and re-input a new number. So once again, if you have this calculation formula that's an auto enter and it's referencing or looking at say three other fields, if any of the values of those three other fields change, this calculation can refire automatically and repopulate this auto enter value. However, this checkbox right here will prevent it from firing once there's a value in that field. So it allows it to fire once and then it doesn't fire again. So it's a, like a one-time trigger. It runs once and then it stops. The last option we have right here is a lookup value. Now we're not going to talk about lookups too much because this really gets into the relational structure, but a lookup value is the ability to reach across a relationship, literally copy and paste the data from another table, from another field into that field right there. So it uses the relationship temporarily like a bridge to bring the data over. And it's literally just like a high speed copy and paste. It brings it over and drops it into this field right here. Pretty slick. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of the auto enter values and how they work. Keep in mind, some of these capabilities right here, especially these calculated values, might be better served by setting up and running script triggers, which are a little bit more sophisticated and mature technology within the FileMaker platform. If you're interested in learning more about script triggers, feel free to watch those videos a little bit later on in this series.